What's going on church fam? It's Church Life bringing y'all another video. I pray y'all are having a blessed day. So one of the most scariest feelings, especially if you are a believer of God, is when you get to a certain point in your walk with Christ and you stop feeling the presence of God. Now there's a few reasons of why this can happen. Let's say you are on the right track and you're building this strong connection with the Heavenly Father. You're trying to build a stronger bond and you're on fire for the Heavenly Father. You're doing wonderful with doing the Heavenly Father's will. Sometimes when the enemy sees that you're about to enter into a new stage of life because you're becoming new, you're letting go of your past and all this kind of stuff that used to hinder you from growing spiritually. What the enemy will try to do is intercept that connection to keep you from stepping into the presence of God. So he will try to build a roadblock in front of you. And the reason why he does this is to try to make you think you're not on the right track. The narrow way that leads to life. So that's a reason why they call it breakthrough as well. See, that roadblock is just a distraction. It's not really nothing there. The enemy just wants to try to make you believe it's something there. So it goes back to the scripture. Walk by faith, not by sight. Sometimes stuff ain't what it appears to be. And you might be super close to the Heavenly Father. But because that spiritual warfare that the enemy is trying to set up in your life is happening, it's making you feel distant from God. But that's not the case at all. Because God never left you. He never forsaken you. He has always been there. So we got to rebuke those intrusive thoughts. That's causing us to believe that God isn't around us. Or that we're not in the presence of God. That's just a lie that the enemy wants you to believe. So the other reason why we can feel distant from God. Is because of how we prioritize our time. You know we might start off. On fire for the Heavenly Father. I'm talking about doing the will of God coming and going. But then we reach this certain level over the course of time that we slowly start to forget about God because of the success. You get what I'm saying? Because of the success, we start to forget about God. And the enemy will use that to derail us off the track the course that the Heavenly Father has us on. And so what happens is this, as we journey on this path of righteousness and we slowly start to not feel the presence of God, it's because we're not feeding the spirit. We're feeding the flesh. We're doing the stuff that's trendy instead of doing something that feeds the spirit, the bread of life. That's what Lord Jesus said he was, the bread of life. Now, what is the bread of life? It's the word of God. If we don't feed the spirit, the word of God, we slowly stop feeling the presence of God in our lives. See, we got to be careful how we prioritize our time. Because if we occupy ourselves with junk food, that's just going to wear us down over the course of time. The words say in John 6, verse 48 through 51, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which come down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. See, Lord Jesus is that living bread that when you eat of that bread, it brings life into your body. The Heavenly Father is life. He's love. And he loved us unconditionally because of Lord Jesus, because he laid his life down. But the world will only give you something that will perish someday. So when you feed into the word, that's what's going to provide life. That's what's going to increase the Heavenly Father's presence 
to be in our lives and we won't feel disconnected. But when you prioritize your time with the world and you feed into the world, it's just going to leave you empty inside because when something perish, we try to replace it, right? So if you're chasing after something that perish because you want to replace it, you're just going to continue to run yourself down and become tired and you're going to feel empty inside because you gave everything you had to the world. You gave everything you had to the enemy. And all the enemy wants to do is steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to leave you empty. He wants to leave you depleted. He wants to destroy everything in your life. And if he can get you in a place of darkness that's so deep, whatever the enemy destroyed won't be replenished or won't be restored because you're not connected to the Most High God. The living God that provides rest, restoration, replenish you, the one who can restore you. The enemy wants to sever that connection you have with God to leave you in a place of lack. So if you feel disconnected from God and you're just not feeling the presence of God like you used to, pay attention to your surroundings. Pay attention to your daily habits or your daily routine. What are you doing each day? Are you spending time with the Heavenly Father or are you doing something else that's outside of the Word of God? Sometimes it's the stuff we do that's making us feel like we're not in the presence of God. We might supposed to be in studying a particular word that the Father placed on our spirit to study. But then next thing you know, some friends call and say, hey, Let's go out bowling or something. Let's go skating or let's go to the pool. And you might put off the studies so you can go hang out with friends. And here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with hanging out with good friends. But the thing is, if we constantly do certain stuff like that, that's what's going to make us feel like we're not connected with God. See, sometimes... When that moment happened, when it just feel like we don't feel the presence of God in our lives, we start to feel more connected to the world. And that's what's stealing that joy away. That's what's stealing your peace away. So it'd be moments like that, that we got to tell our friends, no, we got to say, hey, it's something I'm supposed to be doing. The father, he placed the word on my spirit to study. So that's what I got to do. So I got to kindly decline the offer and once i finish my studies maybe we can hang out you get what i'm saying or we might heard about this new movie that's out so instead of going to that quiet place to pray and stuff like that we prioritize our time with the movies instead and there's nothing wrong with these things it's just if you want to Get back close to the Heavenly Father. You just got to pay attention to what you do on an everyday basis. So feed the spirit what it needs. And that's the bread of life. That's Lord Jesus Christ. When he's knocking at the door of your heart, let him in. And he will sit at the table with you. Because he has the power to kick the devil out. So that we may live more in the spirit of God. And another example I want to leave you with is this. Let's say you got to go to work or something like that, right? And you haven't ate nothing all day. You haven't ate nothing all day. Over the course of time, you start slowly feeling weak. You start feeling weak because you haven't ate nothing all day. So it becomes hard to perform the task that's at hand. Because your body need nourishment to survive. But if you don't eat anything, your body begins to die down. That's the same thing with the spirit. If you don't feed the spirit, the word of God, your spirit begins to die down. And you slowly start to lose that connection with God. Because the last thing we don't want to happen is to become spiritually weak. 
or spiritually dead. We don't want that to happen because that's when the enemy will, the enemy usually swoops in when you're at your weakest. That's when he usually attacks. When you don't have the full armor of God on, when you're underprepared, that's when the enemy attacks. And that's what happened to Lord Jesus when he was fasting 40 days and 40 nights. The devil came in and he tried to tempt Lord Jesus in Matthew 4 verse 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. See, the enemy will always attack you when you're at your lowest point. And that's why we should always keep that spiritual armor on so we can defend ourselves against the fiery darts that the enemy tries to throw our way. See, Lord Jesus overcame the enemy through the word of God, the bread of life, the seeds of hope, because God's word is a seed that provides the stuff we need to survive on an everyday basis. And that's how you conquer the enemy. That's how you build that relationship with the Heavenly Father. Because here's another thing. You can't have a relationship with someone you don't know. It's not going to work. Because in order to have a proper relationship, we first must make ourselves acquainted with each other so we won't feel like strangers to each other. That's the same thing with the Heavenly Father. The Father don't want you to be a stranger to him. He already knows you, but it's up to us to get to know him. So feed the spirit what it needs. And that's the bread of life. The word of God. I pray this word bless you. In Jesus name. Amen. I love y'all.